blast off first bonus episode quite exciting it is just me tim uh nicole's not here she is absent she uh she took a wrong turn and then the uh the time police came and took her so oh well (laughs) (laughs) all right um then we have three cool dudes hanging out with us we got anthony the kaiju slayer and then we got Alex. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. And we got Brandon. Hey, hey, happy to be back. AKA the TNC Movie Nights. What's up? <laughs> How you guys been? <laughs> doing well, man. Doing well. Just doing our movie thing. How oh, are you yeah. doing? It's going good. It's going good. It's chilling like a villain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Same, same. Hell yeah. I saw you guys' review on Black Widow, and uh, I thought it was really funny that Brandon kept on making fun of the uh, Fast and Furious franchise. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, to, to be fair, like, he deserves it, Fast and Furious. I yeah. think probably the worst franchise of all time, but hey, you know, to each their own. Yeah, I don't it's, know it's overrated. I don't know if you would exactly call us Fast and the Furious fans over here. <laughs> I mean, and we're not usually fans of punching down, but when it comes to stuff like that, we're not afraid to kind of go low a little bit. Oh, yeah. Hit him right in the stomach, kick him in the ground. <laughs> just, <laughs> just die. Yeah, for real. Jeez, man. Yes. Yeah, kind of feel like they should have just uh, ended it after seven. But... Or two. You know, two would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. God, those movies are terrible. All right. The only one I give credit was Fast Five, the one where it's a heist. Because it yeah. felt like it did something a little bit different. Yeah, yeah, I'll give them that. Yeah, I'll yeah. give them that. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, anyways, today we have a very special topic. We're talking about the Daisy Plus original Loki. Yes. And, uh, yeah, I figure we'll talk about it a little bit, you know, our pros and cons, a moment you really liked, you really didn't like, if it will affect or how it will affect the future of the uh, the MCU, and uh, shebang. So uh, let's start with Brandon, because I'm curious on your thoughts on it. You seem to have... Very, uh, oh, fuck, I don't know, I don't know what word it. He's a nerd, he'll call me a hard ass. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, some people might know what I mean. I don't know, but anyways, uh, Brandon, what do you think of Loki? Yeah, I, uh, I thought it was very good. I really didn't have, I, I don't think I really had any gripes with it other than it, f- for it being a six episode season, it felt a little slow at times. Mm-hmm. I wish we could have gotten more. You know, I mean, I feel like that's one of those complaints you get from a lot of different things is, oh, it was really good, but I just, I wanted more. You should have given me more. And it, it just felt weird only having six episodes uh, this go through of this show. Uh, but yeah, that's that's my only con. Pro-wise, they definitely kept us on our toes. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of really cool Easter eggs here and there that we saw. Yes. Uh, we'll, I'm sure, get into it a little bit more, but, you yes. know, Quantum Realm type things that we saw for possibly Ant-Man. Uh, and outside of that... It was really cool getting to see Lady Loki come into um, into play into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's not something I thought we would ever see. So I thought that mm. was really neat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Alex, what about you? I super dig this series, man. It was from the first episode. I was completely hooked. We, we watched it like every single time as soon as it came out. Mm. Except maybe once, but it was... Like Brandon said, all those little details, all the little Easter eggs, like the the Thanos copter coming up, man. Oh Oh my my god! God. Yes. But I do kind of agree where it it feels like they left a lot of questions unanswered, even more so than they were planning to. Because I mean, there's nothing wrong with setting up a cliffhanger or you know setting yourself up for future seasons and stuff like that. But Brandon and I have talked about this with sequels before it, you can kind of get stuck in a situation where you don't have a fully completed story arc. And it feels like at times during the last couple of episodes, it felt like they were more trying to set up season two than finish season one. Gotcha. That's, that's my only gripe with it. But other than that, man, this was awesome. Yeah. Oh, and you know what? I lied. I have another gripe with it. Owen Wilson did not say wow one freaking time. 
Uh, oh, you're right. He did it. <laughs> not once, man. We talked wow. about this when the show first came out. We just needed a wow and an impersonation, and we didn't get either of them. God, I, I didn't even want Owen Wilson to say wow, just like you, Alex. I wanted uh, Tom Hiddleston to do a wow, like uh, impersonating him because he is, does a great Owen Wilson impression. No, man. It was yeah. either of them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right, Anthony, what would you think about the series? Um, I actually, uh, liked it. I, uh, thought it was a pretty good show, and honestly, way better than, uh, Falcon Words of Soldier. Um, Thanks. yeah. I still um, love that. I mean, uh, Falcon Words of Soldier, it was good, but the ending kind of sucked. Yeah. But, uh, Loki, I'd say it was, uh, definitely a better show. I think definitely out of all the uh, the live action Marvel shows, the uh, WandaVision, Falcon, uh, Winter Soldier, and Loki, I think easily Loki is like the number one. It is the one I've like hi- like highly recommended. Um, I've like a lot of people at work, like they all know I'm into this kind of shit, and they're like, "So what do you think of Loki?" I'm like, "Dudes, go get a f- try get a free trial. Try to steal someone's Disney Plus. Go watch it. You'll thank me later." <laughs> For yeah. real, man. It really, dude, it really did blow my mind, because, I guess, because I'm not a huge fan of Loki, just watch him in, like, the Thor movies, Avengers, and I thought he was, like, a whatever character. Mm-hmm. I mean, I enjoyed Tom Hiddleston. I think it's because it's Tom Hiddleston. I think he's a good-looking, he's very charismatic. He's very good at what he does. For sure. For sure, yeah. Um, but no, I, th- I do think one of the best episodes was episode five, Journey to the Mystery, where you see all the other Lokis. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, 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 a, like President Loki. Alligator uh, Loki. I call it Florida Loki. <laughs> and I love how they all tried to, like, do the Loki where it's like, haha, this is part of my grand. <laughs> and then they just devolve and just start beating the shit out of each other. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, President Loki gets his hand uh, eaten off. Yeah. Like, why is there an alligator? He's a Loki. <laughs> oh, that's so great. I, I also enjoyed uh, Richard E. Grant as, like, the classic, like, comic book Loki. I'm oh, really hoping God. that maybe yeah. Disney will make, like, a, maybe not a whole series, but maybe just, like, a 40-minute episode just based on him. Maybe on, like, living his life, you know, hmm. before he got picked up by the time cops. Oh, he seems, yeah. he seems, out of everything, he seemed most interesting. It actually would be pretty interesting. Honestly, yeah. Kind of see him, like, how they showed Thanos for a couple minutes, just kind of mm-hmm. chilling on his own. And then, kind of, like, I mean, he he told the whole story. And, and seeing that, even just as a flashback in something else or mm-hmm. a cutaway in something else, just to see a Loki at peace, but kind of you know you know what i mean like having that inner conflict sort of thing seeing him just get to live the life and then mm-hmm. really realize it wasn't the life that'd be killer oh hell mm. yeah with uh richard e grant um i kind of wasn't expecting him to be a, another loki like i was kind of expecting him to be like maybe like something to do with the multiverse like saying oh he could be uh something to do with the timekeepers or he's kane the conqueror or Dormammu's uh, assistant or something like that, but no, he was a uh, Naruto Loki, and I was just mm-hmm. surprised. That would have been crazy. That would be pretty cool. Uh, I'm sure you guys heard about the theory with the uh, with the kid Loki and how he killed uh, Thor. Which one was that? So, what theory? so the one referring to, because so in the show, because uh, you know they're sitting around, kind of going around the table, and mm-hmm. the little kid Loki said he killed Thor. Power move. Um, it's in respect. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the theory is that because in in, uh, in Thor Ragnarok, um, Thor had talked about how when they were kids, Loki was like a snake, and mm-hmm. he was like, "Oh, I love snakes." And then uh, you know, Thor it picked it up. It's like, yeah, it's like, ah, it's me that stabbed him. It's <laughs> as if that stab had killed Thor, and Loki's like, "Oh, oh shit." Oh, oh. I mean, they uh, did. In Thor Ragnarok, they did mention Thor uh, getting turned into a frog by mm-hmm. Loki. Yeah. yeah. And you did see a frog, Thor. Yeah. 
And then a glass it, jar. Yeah, and a <laughs> glass jar. Yeah, you like I see him like hop around try and get out. It was kind of funny actually. Mm-hmm. I haven't confirmed this cuz I was just lazy, but I heard a rumor that they actually got Chris Hemsworth to record new audio for that just screaming into a microphone so that way he it wasn't like any recycled audio but that was actually Thor recording that voice for the frog. Oh really? Yeah. Oh. I think I heard that too actually. Shit, wow. I'm hearing of it. <laughs> some of the details they go into for some of this stuff, man. Mm-hmm. So what was your guys' thoughts on uh, the kiss at the end? Uh, I was uh, surprised they would do that. And it just felt a little weird, too. I was just like, uh, you guys uh, find this weird that he's kissing himself, but a female version? Or is also, like, conjuring up, like, a like a, like a twisted, like, like, romantic relationship with himself? <laughs> is this just an elaborate form of masturbation? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I think, I mean, they set it up so long yeah. ago. Yeah. It would have felt like a disappointment if they didn't do it. Uh Plus, I mean, I think even uh, Owen Wilson had a line about it. Like, that's the most Loki thing ever is to just fall in love with yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really did like the direction, even as weird as it was. You know, it it felt very odd because when you think about it a little bit more in detail, it's like, yeah, it's Loki kissing Loki or Loki falling in love with Loki. Yeah, But it just shows, yeah, how narcissistic narcissistic he is yeah um, the only person he can love is another version of himself so yeah it's weird watching it but at the end of the day it was very clever i thought yeah oh yeah and let's be honest loki canonically had sex with a horse at one point yes. So like maybe kissing yourself isn't the weirdest thing he's done yeah I remember reading that online that I think after the episode came out where they were both like holding hands or some shit. And people mm-hmm. were like, well, yeah, the weirdest thing that look at it is they turned to a horse and he got railed by another horse. And like, <laughs> with the, I think he had like, what, like eight arms, like eight legs or something? I don't fucking know. Yeah, it's it's funny when they have like Loki, the character in the MCU, but also it's just Loki, the Norse god, and yeah. Marvel kudos to them they didn't like stray away from that so it's yeah i mean it's just if we if we really want to peel back the curtain that much this is not the weirdest thing he's done yeah (laughs) it's like uh disney where uh you know they tell stories about princesses but the actual story is much more darker like more twisted yeah that's like yeah (laughs) some old german fairy tale and everyone dies at the end and they're like okay maybe we maybe we leave that part out (laughs) Let's make this for eight-year-olds. Oh, yeah. But to, uh, well, I guess to get a little bit back on the topic, um, you guys think this was, it was, like, a way to introduce, just, like, it's, so like, at the end, um, it got a way to introduce the multiverse since Disney yeah. got more rights to more uh, heroes, like the like the Fantastic Four and, like, the X-Men and all that jibber-jabber. Oh, think, 1,000%. It was, yeah, do you, think, do you guys think it was, like, a good way to introduce it? Yeah, it was. A, it's a very like baby steps way to do it, where people are like, oh, "Okay, so interesting." Mm-hmm. You know, there are different universes out there, and now I think doing it with Loki with Tom Hiddleston, a very likable, as you said, charismatic person. People want to watch this show, even if they aren't huge Marvel fans. Right. Like I think Falcon Winter Soldier that did fall flat for some people. I personally really enjoyed it, but mm-hmm. it wasn't. It's for your hardcore Marvel fan. This anyone could have really enjoyed, I think, and it was a great way to be like, "Hey, everyone, remember this later on because it's coming like now." Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. And I think they did a good job of kind of easing us into it because we they talked about the whole time travel thing and different timelines and alternate realities and stuff all the way back in like Endgame, and they kept bringing it up, and you know there's some hints about it in WandaVision and, and and so it didn't come across as some entirely new out of left field sort of thing where people have been hinting about it for a while and then you know we knew the names of some of the the movies are multiverse themed and so mm-hmm. it, 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 there wasn't sort of that slap in the face shock factor to it and so we just got to sit there and watch it slowly develop while knowing it was happening so everyone was just super hyped about like it officially happening oh yeah for sure yeah, 
And since uh, the uh, finale pretty much set up season two and kind of set up Doctor Strange, like WandaVision did. Yeah. Um, who thinks Loki would probably show up in Doctor Strange too? I feel like. Oh, I think definitely. I think like it's it's because it's also called the Multiverse of Madness. Maybe we'll see Patrick Stewart like roll up in his in his fucking wheelchair. <laughs> We're gonna see everybody in that movie. We'll oh, see I, uh, I, Michael Fassbender just... and Ian McKellen. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> We're I'm really hoping. We're gonna <laughs> see. You'll, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw each other in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be funny if all of a sudden they just bring up the multiverse and all of a sudden they just have us in there and be like what are we doing here <laughs> Wait, what? it's a cut from this recording when like jesus christ is there a royalty check in the mail or something <laughs> this is mad <laughs> wait a minute that's me wait, i'm at work <laughs> what's going on here <laughs> oh, but yeah i think that that i think the multiverse of madness is going to be huge i think that and uh spider-man no way home yes. are going to be the two big yeah. ones that really i mean they've already set the table for the multiverse but those mm-hmm. are going to be the two where that explosion happens where that becomes the the conflict is sort of introduced for for the phase of marvel that we're on, right? oh yeah one of the uh uh one of the other jabs i kind of take place at loki i feel like the loki we got in the show should have been a little bit more evil in a sense, because it's right off the back of uh, the 2012 Loki, you know, right off of uh, the first Avengers movie. Yeah. Like, I don't think he should have been as nice and humble. I guess humble, yeah, as humble as he was in the show. Like, I thought he should have just been more, been, uh, more of an asshole. Mm. I well, totally... See... So, I think that's where they really messed up with only doing six episodes because they needed him to become good but he became good too fast he, which yeah. they, you know they did the whole time loop scenario of like the bad dream like you know it was smart it was a good idea seeing him crumble but you saw him crumble a little too quick i felt he should have gone through maybe like a full episode almost like a filler episode of him just going through tough stuff mm-hmm. and it, it, it did feel very rushed for him to go yeah i'm i'm gonna try to kill the avengers and take over the world to yeah now i'll be your partner buddy buddy it's like mm-hmm. it was quick you needed more than a powerpoint of his mom dying and a kick in the nuts from an old friend to really get the entire experience from mm-hmm. Avengers one loki to end game loki getting choked out there was too much character development that happened there oh yeah and you hit the nail on the head there Randall. yeah i don't know. i mean that, that was just that was that was just the one thing i just had in my mind while i was like halfway through the show i'm like he just he just shouldn't be this nice i mean he just you know he should be trying to like uh like stab owen wilson in the back at like any point he could just get out of that situation i do kind of like how they had his like loss of power moment happen where he felt like he was in control and then the whole infinity stones thing and that oh, sort of yeah. realization he is in a whole new new realm here you know mm. he's everyone's playing a different game here so having little things like that throughout kind of took away I don't want to say how inexcusable, but just it took away that sort of like eye rolling. Like, there's no way he would do this yet. They mm-hmm. did like barely enough, but I I think Brandon's absolutely right. They could have had a whole episode of of him sort of breaking the mold of Avengers one Loki to the the through Ragnarok and Endgame Loki. Mm-hmm. I also though it was kind of fun to watch him kind of just watch like just like the movies in a sense yeah it seemed it was kind of touching and then when um like he was watching him and like thor and thor's like you're a good brother and then i mean i can't remember exactly what the dialogue was something about fighting side by side together and then yeah something from thor ragnarok Uh yeah then then cuts to thanos killing him Mm -hmm. in the war which you could say is thanos the first snap of the of the movie (laughs) <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah, I appreciate you. that. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> oh my god. Gotcha. So where do you guys think that this uh, 
the TVA. Do you guys? So it is in the the quantum realm, right? Is that confirmed or is it just heavily like speculated? I believe it's heavily heavily speculated. I don't think they've come out and said anything yet. People have just taken clips of Ant Man and I'm sorry, Ant Man and the Wasp. Yeah. Where you know see bits of the quantum realm. I think actually in both, where you actually see a city that looks just like the Timekeepers, like mm. city. Hmm. Yeah, because I remember. I mean, I've only seen Ant Man and the Wasp. I think like once. And that was the the one only time in theaters. But uh, looking back in those clips, I'm like, oh yeah. I mean, that does looks like a very colorful city. Um, I mean, in uh, Doctor Strange, uh, you uh, they did show the uh, quantum quantum realm in there as well, when he's a uh, high dimensions. Because the ancient ones threw him in, and you see him like jumping to like this dimension and this dimension and then see the the quantum realm and then the uh, dark dimension mm. i mean i mean there could have been a city or something like that in the quantum realm somewhere just we don't know well hopefully we'll touch up on it in the uh the third Ant-Man movie it's like Ant man like quantum mania yeah mm-hmm. it sounds like yeah. a wrestling thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Quantum Mania, brother. Hey, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing though. Is a lot of that kind of going back to? I feel like they saved a little bit too much for the what's next. Mm. They set up so many things, and they also kind of, kind of did, kind of didn't have any sort of big baddie in there. You know, mm. we all thought it was going to be the Timekeepers, and they ended up being fake. And then there was the yeah. rumor about like Kang the the Conqueror being in there, and that's how they were going to introduce him. And then it was going to be, oh, they're in the Quantum Realm, and it's Kang. And then we see that in Ant Man, uh, mm. Ant Man three, in Quantum Manium. And then they just kind of didn't do that. And then there, you know, the the big reveal being who the hell is this guy he's the one who remains and yeah and he well, it, it, well he is kang yeah the yeah variant of kane conqueror yeah, yeah. okay okay yeah. I, didn't, I, didn't I, I can confirm or not yeah well they never like fully say his name in there mm-hmm. but he says like i've gone by many names so and so so and so and the conqueror and i'm like oh, okay. right yeah this is the way he said it that was, if he was officially so is that actor coming back to like I would assume so. Play Kang? Is he going to be like officially cast as Kang in Quantum Manium? Well, I'm thinking that Kang the Conqueror is going to be the next like baddie, like like a Thanos level, yeah. right? And Loki is just send him up. Yep, man. If if he comes back for, if he can stay in this phase of Marvel, that was amazing because he absolutely killed it in that last episode. Oh, he seemed like a really fun guy. <laughs> Oh my god, every second he was on screen, I, I were glued to the TV. It was like every single word he said I was mm. hanging on to. So great. And then just to have like an infinite amount of hymns, maybe. Or who knows? Yeah. Either way, it's gonna yeah. be awesome. Yeah, Kane the Conqueror is gonna come back. Oh yeah, and, for uh, sure. Hope for like seasons uh for season two. And apparently season three has also been confirmed, but I'm honestly uh, shocked that a season two has even been confirmed because I feel like the show definitely left on a point where the movies of MCU are kind of get into it more. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I I don't know personally. I'm very okay. like I liked this a lot. I really did enjoy it. I wanted more episodes, but I really don't want them to just do more to just you know cash grab. Mm-hmm. It felt like it should be done. Oh yeah, I'm hoping that the next seasons can kind of follow along with the big reveals that happen because there's so much that's going to happen over the next like year and a half two years that we don't know yet yeah. and then and and then then there's going to be loki season two you know what i mean it's not like mm. it's going to come out for any of this and so i i'm really hoping and it's going to be tough to walk that fine line but i'm really hoping that they can just keep that always in the sort of the next step instead of just sticking with the TVA, because if we are past the TVA and we are in a full multiverse war and all that, and then we keep jumping back, I think people, including myself, are going to lose interest. But also, you you can't lose your source material completely and then make an entirely new show, just throw Loki in it and call it a season two. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be kind of a challenge for them to 
stay close enough to season one that it feels like a true continuation, but not dragging back to stuff that we've already resolved. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. But it's Marvel, man. They they really they rarely miss. So until they do, I guess we got faith in them. I always oh, yeah. have faith in. Them. Oh yeah. yeah. And I keep on hearing a couple of different theories too, like saying that Loki, uh, pretty much uh, set up uh, the uh, what if series even though oh, that's I not, that yeah even though it's not canon to the uh mcu but mm-hmm. who knows what they do with that i'd be surprised if they just uh say the what if series is canon even though it's not mm-hmm. yeah there's yeah. really no way they can make it canon just because the whole point of it is supposed to be like it's you like know what shot. if yeah mm-hmm. like what if steve rogers never came out of the ice what if you know this character did this what if spider-man joined the fantastic four like so many different things like that I love just, yeah, I love the paper bag. <laughs> yeah it's one of my because i believe that's actually one of the biggest what if comics uh because that's how spider-man is like introduced into marvel is he teams up in a sense kind of was almost like a villain to them but they think it's a bad guy or something mm. whatever it is but yeah there's a lot of things they can do but yeah there's no way they could make it canon Mm, but how fun is that going to be, man? Oh, God, Imagine so Marvel great. with no consequences. Exactly. That's exactly what it's going to be. And that's going to be the fun part. Like I'm, I'm more excited for that than I am probably about almost any movie currently announced other than Spider-Man No Way Home. Yeah. Uh, this is yeah. going to be like Game of Thrones. Don't get attached to any characters. <laughs> I'm just going to start exactly. telling people off just to hurt us. They're like, you know what? We kept your favorites around for 10 years. Now you're going to watch Steve Rogers die again. And here's Iron Man. <laughs> And again, and again, cry. Love Loki's going to die for real. For real, he's this time. <laughs> Tom Hiddleston is uh, done. <laughs> there's going to be yeah. no coming back from this anymore. No one's going to make it in the end. No, mm. no surprises. They're dead. It'll be like <laughs> Red Wedding style, man. Everyone's gone. It's a one Oh, Lord. <laughs> and one thing I have before we get back to like fully talking about Loki. Uh, I really kind of hope they do. If you guys have seen the show Love, Death, and Robots, I would like to see them do like a very one-off episode each thing where it's, you know, 15, 30-minute episodes. If you haven't seen it, then maybe you don't understand, but whoever has is listening to this and is like, I've seen Love, Death, and Robots. Yeah, that's perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's something I did want to mention back with uh, Loki. Something I really liked that they hinted is, I, I can't think of the actor's name now, but like old Loki, like the actual... Like I will, I'll just call him Old Man Loki for right now. How he talks about how it's like, oh, I made a project, a projection of myself so real that Thanos believed it and snapped my neck. It's like, oh yeah. my god! Like it, it was such a cool little hint back to Loki still alive potentially in the MCU. Oh yeah, I mean, I wonder if each of them have their own like little abilities because um, Sylvie had, well, she had the ability where she could make people relive was it memories, right? Dreams or mm-hmm. some shit like that. Yeah, memories. and Loki's like, wait, I could do that. So I was wondering if each of them just has their own little thing that well, that our Loki has no idea. What's up? Well, yeah, I think a big part of it is they just don't realize how strong they are yet. And sure. that's the fun part is seeing them unlock those crazy mm-hmm. abilities and potential they have. Yeah, we got to see our variant stretch his legs a little bit. By the end of it, he was he was straight out like he was one move away from being in Star Wars. That dude was using the force. <laughs> dude. Pulling stuff away, yeah. throwing people. It was seeing him go full power mode while also like pulling his punches because he wasn't trying to harm anyone you know he's just trying to stop bad things from happening yeah but man, if we get to see loki kind of go ham on someone that's gonna be fun oh yeah just imagine if he had this shit in the movies like like in the first avengers i think he probably would have won like oh my he, god if yeah. he knew like, what uh, he could do like uh do the uh projections of himself like put himself like everywhere and just fight like a bunch of dudes Mm. he wouldn't even need the spear to you know control people and tap into their minds he would just be like yeah okay everybody here uh touch your mind your mind your mind your mind your mind i have this entire army i have all of new york (laughs) it was that and then also being able to projection all of asgard yeah oh my god (laughs) what What a power move yeah (laughs) oh man i was surprised about that i was like whoa this is intense mm. yeah they went really big on that i wonder what the show's budget was it seemed like it it seemed like it had a good budget but it was also kind of good at hiding it at the same time 
Yeah, yeah, yeah it just had that yeah. kind of like cheese factor that some of like the CW shows have. No disrespect to them, but it, you notice the difference. You know? Oh yeah. Oh, Disney man. Plus bets big on series with budgets as high as twenty five million per episode. Oh, wow. Like a lot. Oh, wow. <laughs> God. No wonder why there were only six. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, six episodes cost what like Ant Man cost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, you, yeah, basically one division was nine episodes, Falcon Winter Soldier was six, I think, and Loki was six. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, it, uh, it, like they could have gotten rid of all these and they could have just made Avengers four. Yeah. With a really <laughs> good budget. <laughs> See, I mean, Falcon Winter Soldier was also twenty five million. What was One Division? Is that a curiosity? Uh, I feel like it might have been more because they had a lot of good shit in One Division. Yeah. Speaking of those, uh, you know, the whole the holy trinity of Marvel TV series that mm. we've gotten. This thing. Yeah, 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 I'm talking about Daredevil and which other ones? <laughs> yeah, no, the holy trinity of the recent ones. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, not not the the not the 2015 ones, uh, but. One thing that I was really scared of, which I've completely turned 180 on, is I was really scared that they were going to have critical information happen in these, which we all knew was going to happen. But I I felt like it might be very sort of like it would exclude those who didn't get a chance to see the shows when Marvel movies come out. But watching them now, there was so much that needed to happen before they could set up what's going to happen next. It was like, we either get some mission critical TV shows or we have to introduce this whole new phase before we can even get to the things we want to get to. Mm. So I've, I've come full circle on that. I've totally agree. This is necessary, but it's also cool to see them assembling a squad again. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. You know, not so great folks. <laughs> um, speaking of like the, uh, I guess we're like the multiverse. Um, I think it would have been pretty cool. If we saw like a like a previous act, like an actor that auditioned for a role, like a like a John Krasinski Captain America or like a Tom Cruise Iron Man, or you get Terrence Howard back as uh, Rhodes. Oh my God, <laughs> that, that would be that would insane. Uh, I mean, Tom Hiddleston uh, did audition for Thor. Yeah, not Loki, but there's even a footage of uh, Tom Hiddleston as Thor. Mm. Oh, yeah. I just imagine how that would turn out if they threw that in there in the multiverse thing. <laughs> There's one Loki in the group of Lokis in that like bar fight scene, and it's just Tom Hiddleston, but in full Thor garb. <laughs> <laughs> or I see a Chris Hemsworth as a as a Loki. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be amazing. I, th- I think it'd also be kind of cool if they do. Um... Have you guys seen the movie Last Action Hero with Schwarzenegger, where like a little kid Long goes into like out. like a little kid goes into like a movie? He's in his like movie universe, and then there's a scene where he's at like a fucking like blockbuster, and he sees a he sees like a cardboard cutout Terminator uh, two, but it's Sylvester Stallone instead of Schwarzenegger. <laughs> I wonder if we'll see some is anything similar to that, where like you know like we don't necessarily see anyone, but it's confirmed that this universe has like. Fuck, I'm just so many possibilities. I can't fucking pick one. But Something like, oh. in the background, what they did with the Thanos copter. Yeah. You see, like, <laughs> a movie poster for Thor 2, and it's it's uh, Tom Hiddleston with, like, Natalie Portman. Yeah. That would be the most. <laughs> That'd be crazy. <laughs> maybe, hey, maybe season two, man. Yeah, I am still on that WoW train. We better get a WoW out of season wow. two, man. <laughs> Wow. Wow. <laughs> He's going to annoy Brandon by saying wow. Wow. <laughs> We're just like, do like a countdown on uh, how many wows there is. If you're like, uh, countdown of this. Wow. wow. <laughs> One. Wow. <laughs> I can't do a certain that twice. I refuse to believe that. Marvel's too self aware to know that. <laughs> God, that was some, some funny shit. Um, trying to see if there's any last questions or thoughts before we before we end the show. Um, hmm. 
Is there any like future Marvel or DC movies you guys are looking forward to? Um, let's see. Marvel. I'm the only movie I'm looking forward to is just uh, Spider Man No Way Home. Mm-hmm. Uh, DC. I'm actually looking forward to the Suicide Squad. Yes, that actually looks like gonna be good. Yeah. Uh, anything else, Marvel? Uh, Shane Chi. Uh, looks pretty good. Kind of curious how they'll go into that. Um, the Eternals. Uh, I don't really give a shit about. I, I mean, <laughs> it looks, it looks good, but I'm probably just not gonna be a huge fan of it. Like with Captain Marvel, I was like, yeah, no. I might check it out because I do like the actor uh, Richard Madden. He was in a uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, and he, some, and he was in the uh, Netflix's uh, The Bodyguard, which is pretty good. Um, I'm hyped for all of it, man. Just mm-hmm. um, yeah, ready to receive all of the Marvel movies, and I'm sure we'll end up reviewing most of them. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude! At all, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, yeah, just like Anthony said, I'm excited for Spider-Man No Way Home. For DC though, I'm excited for the reboot. You know, when they you know reboot everything and just start <laughs> over because. It's been a rough they can't ride. Get it right. sure. <laughs> yeah, it's all been crap. So, How is Shazam no. still leading the pack? Dude, I mean, come on. Yeah, like Shazam was good. Like, yeah, no hate to Sam, but oh. how is that your best DC movie? Seriously? Mm. You've had so many with Batman and Super. We don't need to go off on the tags and all that, but come on, man. Mm. Yeah. We're I mean, uh we are getting the Flashpoint movie and that's supposed to like uh, you oh, know, yeah, like, Michael King coming back as Batman. Yeah. If that ever comes out, though. The, the, the Flash movie was, quote, unquote, supposed to come out in, like, 2019. Yeah. Then it got, like, fully pushed back, delayed until, like, until uh, indefinitely. And now there's still no, I think, official release date on it. Mm-hmm. If if we even get it, that's what I'm excited for, yeah. It's all going to be, it's going to be Flashpoint Days of Future Past anyway. They're just going to reset the franchise with that because they want oh, yeah. to be We did too much. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. There's also Black Adam. They yeah. just they had just video. finished uh they they had just finished making that film. I had no idea. Yeah, it's, it's like yeah, Black Adam's done rapping. I'm like, wait, when did it start? Like three years ago, roughly. Yeah. <laughs> God, it fucking blows my mind. Um, I'm excited for uh, Thor: Love and Thunder. I'm excited to see oh uh, Jane Foster, like is... Natalie Portman as Jane Foster and as uh, Lady Thor. I'm hoping we get to see like Beta Ray Bill in that yes. brief moment. Beta Ray Bill's yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> Taika Waititi was saying that it's like the craziest thing he's ever done. Mm-hmm. And he was like, if you tried to to walk into a studio and pitch this movie, you'd probably never work again. <laughs> so, <laughs> it'd be super hype. <laughs> We're like, shit. Well, you're Taika Waititi. You made all this good shit. Yeah, we'll take we'll take your word. Here's a budget. Here's a crazy amount of money. <laughs> Sing- no single saved the Thor franchise. Dude, he fucking did. Like those the, the the first two movies are not good. I'll admit it. Thor and Thor Dark World are not good. First one's pretty decent. The second one was meh. Ragnarok was amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I would argue that Dark World is the worst Marvel movie to date. Uh the first one, like it's needed. First movies are usually kind of boring with a little yeah. bit of nostalgia in them. It was and fine. Yeah, it's it's an okay movie, but yeah, realistically, Thor: Dark World was a rough one for sure. Yep. The only <laughs> scene I really remember was uh, Loki turned himself into Captain America for like a brief moment, and also that I, I remember that blowing my mind in the theaters. But yeah. I, I don't remember like the rest of it. <laughs> yeah, and they uh, basically uh, kind of like set up Guardians of the Galaxy at the end, sort of. What are you talking about? The post credit scene with uh, Benicio Del Toro's collector. collector. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Benicio, man. They got a... They, they had Benicio Del Toro, and they used him for, like, five minutes of screen time over the last seven years. Yeah. we got to get some more collector. Well, yeah. shit, maybe this multiverse maybe will fix that. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, uh, Jeff Goldblum is coming back. As the uh, Grandmaster in Love and Thunder. Nice. That's... I saw Christian yeah. Bale is going to be the villain. Uh, yeah, he's he's going to be uh, 
Gore the uh, God Butcher. The God Butcher. Interesting. Yeah, Damn. Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe's also going to be in here, too. Jesus, who isn't? <laughs> Tag White, he just sent a mass email to everyone. Like, hey, who wants to come join? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know the funniest thing is because it's him. If that was actually true, I don't know if I would be that surprised. Yeah. <laughs> would you guys think of that uh, video that Ryan Reynolds posted of himself as Deadpool and oh, Taika Waititi Korg? as Korg <laughs> promoting Free Guy? That was hilarious. That was actually, dude. dude that was like, that was amazing. <laughs> it was beautiful. <laughs> Deadpool's in the MCU. Deadpool's Confirmed. reviewing Reynolds movies. Korg's in there too. I mean, it was masterpiece of two minutes. Mm-hmm. You know, you know what pissed me off in that trailer is that because uh, he's like, he's like, everyone liked my uh, my Corella trailer. And I'm like, wait, what? So I, I paused. I stopped the video. I went to go look for. Him. I'm like, that mother. He's lying. <laughs> I did the same thing. <laughs> Where are the Ooh, fucking dogs? It was dogs? fake. <laughs> <laughs> especially oh, the uh when the free guy was about to come out mm-hmm. and uh they were like uh, talking and it's like that and all of a sudden a uh, steve harrington actor is like oh yeah uh did you guys uh work together before yeah wasn't it green lantern <laughs> oh they both were in green lantern oh awesome. shit they were like no no i i don't i don't know what you're talking about I no, forgot, this is the first time we've ever met. I forgot to tell you was in that movie. Yeah. I think everyone <laughs> wants to forget that they were in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they like, uh, turn back, and they're gone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. God, I hope they poke fun at that when, like, Deadpool's officially in the movies. He, like, meets up. And, like, I think, like, a Deadpool and a Korg, like, TV show, or, like, a one-shot would be fun to watch. Oh, my God. Or just sitting around watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be sick. All right. Yeah. Well, I think, this, I think that was about it. Uh, thank you for listening to this bonus episode of the Casual Drink and Play podcast. Movie nights. You guys want to shout out your, your stuff? Where, where can people find you? Yeah, Brandon. Uh, tell them where they can find us. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice simple. You can find us on thenerdchambers.com. All of our content is on there from the movie nights to uh, my own stuff that I do, streaming, all that fun stuff at twitch.tv slash TNC Penguin. But, you know, if you want to listen to us talk movies, Alex and myself, then do a nice simple TNC movie nights. Well done. Well done. Well done. And thank you for having us on, man. We love being on the show. Hell yeah. yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I've been trying to get you guys, I, I've been trying to get the three of you guys on for quite some time. And I felt like there's really nothing like juicy coming out. And I was like, oh shit, Loki. Uh, at the last minute, I was like, you guys want to jump on? <laughs> oh, that's great. Anthony, how about you? Do you want, yeah, an Instagram you want to shout out? Yeah, you can uh, find me on Instagram, Facebook, and whatnot. I'm the uh, Kaiju Slayer. You can also find me on the uh, PlayStation as well. Hell yeah. It's a uh, Kaiju Slayer. Hell yeah, dudes. All right, well, till next time, everybody. See ya.